The mock's profits have taken a beating, but Ali Sejwani, the son of founder Hussein Sejwani, says there's plenty of room to grow. We're here to find out what he has up his sleeve. I'm Bernd Debusman. I'm here with Shayan Shaquille. <laughs> So, Shayan, Damak's, of course, one of the most prominent developers in the Middle East, but it's had a rough year, hasn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, the property market's kind of in a, well, it's not in a meltdown, but it's definitely uh, not as, as good as it used to be. So, Damak's profits fell about 50% over the course of 2018. It's a publicly listed company. Uh, and so, that is uh, not great news, but it's not great news for, you know, all of the property developers. But Damak is selling. The market's not dead. Uh, it's just not selling as much as it used to. And so there's a lot of payment plans in the market and stuff to try to, you know, uh, stimulate sales. So where does Ali Sajwani fit into the picture? Well, Ali Sajwani is now general manager at the company that his dad founded. Uh, Damak, as you mentioned, is one of the most prominent developers in the region. And Ali is uh, taking up the mantle, learning from his father, uh, and along with his siblings, Abbas and Amira, uh, they're all working towards trying to, you know, craft a new future for Damak. Um, Ali Sajwani says he has a hand in everything that the company does, uh, but he does tend to focus quite a bit on sales, uh, pre-sales. Um, but he also, you know, dabbles in like, you know, handovers and everything that goes into the, to selling a property, exploring new opportunities, things like that. So that's what his role at Damak is. And he's trying to grow that as well now. So he's 27 years old, if I'm not mistaken, and just obviously a few years out of university. How's he contributing? How's it going so far? Well, we interviewed him. He came by the studios a few weeks ago. Um, he is a few years out of university, and you can tell he's quite youthful. But he's really ascending into the role of, you know, a spokesperson for the company, uh, somebody with decision-making power at the company, um, and, and trying to take it into new areas. So, for instance, um, he wants to he wants to turn Demac into a very efficient sort of organization, make it more digital. Um, and there's, you know, quite a bit of a learning curve with that. So, for instance, because sales are down this year, it's he's saying that there's a great uh, uh, focus at the company on improving efficiencies, lowering overheads, um, and in some instances that's led to like a culture change at the company. But it's also led to you know having to understand how staff works. For instance, they rolled out the software called Salesforce, which digitized, which which you know streamlined and brought a lot of efficiency to the sales process. But it left a lot of people feeling like they were not as important at the company. But because he said you know the leadership was committed, the senior management was committed. We really pushed out that sort of, you know, uh, a change from the old way of working. Um, and once people realize the benefit uh, from the initial shock of incorporating technology into your company, uh, quote, he says, you just never look back. So it's important to not panic and keep moving forward. Interesting. So, I mean, given the company's fortunes at the moment, where does he want to take this family brand? So he travels quite a bit. He travels every few months um, and they're constantly looking for opportunities in Europe. Uh, he wants to take the family brand into places where he says that the brand is not known. For instance, he said anywhere in the region, you mentioned Demac, they know exactly what you're talking about. But if you mentioned Demac in London or in New York or in America, nobody knows who Demac is. And he wants to rectify that. He wants to change it. So they're looking at trying to expand into New York, uh, in London. Uh, he's even looking at places uh, like uh, Singapore or Hong Kong. They have a resort coming up in the Maldives. They have this huge luxury tower with the Versace interiors coming up in London. Um, it, it, it's extremely expensive for a 15 bedroom apartment. It's $22 million. Uh, but those are the sorts of like, you know, really uh, attention grabbing pro projects that they're very interested in. And of course, Damak has, you know, its own divisions, the property division and the hotel division, but there's also like the Sajwani family fund, uh, which, you know, they can tap into. So does the, do they have any concrete plans yet? Uh, so Hussein Sajawani was at Davos and he mentioned that, you know, they were very big on London. They were willing to enter London with a big paycheck because they believed in London. And there was reports that he had committed to spending about $1.3 billion. Damak came out with a statement saying that that is not associated with Damak. That Sajwani, the Sajwani family dynasty's own funds that maybe he would be committing some resources out of. Um, there's still quite a bit of, uh, you know, clarity that remains to, to, to be received about what their plans are. But it does seem like they are really interested in going abroad. Uh, they've named five cities uh, in, in North America from Boston to Toronto. And they seem really interested in Toronto because the influx of immigrants uh, into the country, about 300,000 a year, which says, uh, which they say is, you know, really good for the property market. Um, some markets they say like are just not places where they see value in investing, like Berlin, because it's too expensive. Uh, but there are there are pockets of growth in in Europe, and like North America, it seems like, is, is where they're probably going to make a significant investment in soon. 
Interesting. Well, thank you, Shay. Um, I'm, I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about the mock. Of course, we have lots of news about the mock at arabianbusiness.com, so go check it out. As always, you're watching Inside AB. Make sure to tune in every weekday morning at 10 a.m. Thank you.